I dare to say that Panama would be a good candidate for the location of this space elevator. This country offers many positive qualities that make this project viable. We are close to the geographical equator, we do not have earthquakes or hurricanes, we are the air hub of Latin America and it is not a simple coincidence that we have here the Panama Canal. The development of the project would start in GEO, in a very similar way to those proposed in the videos, Primal Space Elevator, or in the video, Space Elevator, only up to GEO. If you have not seen them yet, I leave you here the links. Assuming then that the tether is connected from the Earth's surface, up to kilometer 100,000, I present different models of climbers below. Important note. It should be noted that these climbers can use both types of tether, the cable type tether, and the ribbon type tether, and in this video we will describe the climbers that use these tethers. Important note. All astronauts have a height of more or less 1 meter and 90 centimeters. Let's assume for a moment that all the valuable information presented in this document entitled The Climber Tether Interface of the Space Elevator is fulfilled or is implemented in the engines of the climbers that are going to be presented here, both in the climber of cable as in the ribbon climber. Let's start by explaining the climber that uses the ribbon type tether near the Earth's surface. The tether will be around 30 centimeters wide and the cylinders should press and take the most friction to this small tether. Once the motors are assembled and pressing both sides of the tether, they should look like this. In this representation, there are a total of 12 motors with characteristics similar to those of the previously mentioned document, and separated into groups of four throughout the entire length of the climber. The chassis will be made of carbon fiber, or of better quality, it must withstand the space environment, the 12 electric motors will be anchored in it. It has a height of around 20 meters and can load four containers and is designed to use the tether type ribbon and cable type. With the 12 motors installed in the chassis it should look like this. As previously mentioned, this chassis can carry four containers, the dimensions of which are as follows, 3.80 meters wide by 6 meters high and 1.78 meters deep and fit into the chassis as follows. It also has a satellite dish with a radius of about 6 meters. 
which receives the laser or microwave and transforms it into energy for the climber and is strongly attached to the chassis of the climber. And finally, it will carry a protective cover, made of very light and highly reflective material, so that it covers the entire contour of the climber just like a suitcase does. This cover has doors that open and close thanks to its motorized hinges. And on the other hand, we have my favorite, the climber that uses the cable type tether, and that works as follows. The tether near the Earth's surface will have a diameter of around 10 centimeters. The rotating screw jack will be in charge of pressing the tether from opposite sides with the necessary pressure to obtain the best tether taction. This pressure will cause the tether to deform near the Earth's surface where it is not as thick, as you get closer to geo. The tether will thicken and the rotating screw jack will reduce the pressure since in geo the tether will be around 12 inches thick. In the same way, it has three groups of four motors distributed along the chassis, and they are very similar to those described in the document, the climber tether interface of the space elevator. And installed they look like this. Important note. Remember that both climbers are the same, only the design of the motor and tether change. As previously mentioned, they can carry the same type of container, which has a volume of 41 cubic meters of capacity. Important note, both climbers have special stops, which prevent the container when inserted from touching the tether in any way. Same as its twin climber design for ribbon-type tether, it also has a satellite dish with a radius of about 6 meters, which receives the laser or microwave and transforms it into energy for the climber.
and is strongly attached to the chassis of the climber. And finally, its protective cover made of very light and highly reflective material, so that it covers the entire contour of the climber just like a suitcase does. This climber design has doors that open and close thanks to their motorized hinges. Assuming that the tether is ready to be used, then everything would start on the surface of the Earth, either using a nuclear silo type structure on Earth or an offshore platform. In this video, we will use the maritime platform structure and we will remove part of the structure to only leave the arrival tower and thus appreciate in better detail how everything would work. At the bottom of the arrival tower will be located all the components and machinery necessary to generate either the microwaves or the laser that will be sent through the satellite dish to the climber. The beam of energy, either laser or microwave, will come out from the satellite dish towards the climber, and it will receive it with its satellite dish. Transform it into electricity and thanks to this it will ascend until it reaches geo. In this presentation, the first thing that will be done is to take the space elevator to kilometer 37,000, where the assembly machine is located. At this site, specialized robots will be waiting for the arrival of the space elevator to unload the containers, since a second laser or microwave generator will be built at this point. Once the construction of this second laser or microwave system located at kilometer 37,000 is finished, it should look like this. Another option that feeds energy to this second laser or microwave generator in GEO 
could be the installation of a nuclear microreactor that feeds the system for a couple of decades. There are two reasons to build a second laser or microwave generator system at kilometer 37,000. Number one is due to the Earth's atmosphere, since it takes the climber eight days to just reach geo and another eight days to return, and in that period of time, the weather can change on the Earth's surface and hinder the delivery of energy. Also it makes more sense to build it at this point. Since I have 36,900 kilometers without continuous atmospheric interference. Reason number two, is that when the climber returns to the maritime platform or nuclear silo, it could assemble a second climber that receives energy from geo and thus double the shipment of goods. And thanks to its, railway pantograph, type connection, both can share the power in case of delivery failure. Once the climber arrives at GEO, it is received by a swarm of robots that will unload the eight containers with merchandise that will go to space. And other robots will place containers with merchandise from space return to Earth. The swarm of robots will take the containers to kilometer 100,000, where a galactic port will be placed and the same crew with the help of the cargo robots will load the spaceships, in this presentation the SpaceX Starship, with containers and fuel for your missions. Also, using the same climbers, a kind of warehouse will be built by stacking several of these climbers one on top of the other, where the containers will wait for the climber in geo.